Amen. Amen. So we have today the feast of Saint Boniface, um, uh, the apostle to the Germans, or the apostle to Germany. Um, converted the um, <clears throat> Anglo-Saxons in the uh, 7th or 8th century. Uh, he himself was uh, from England. Uh, he was uh, from a noble family and against his father's wishes pursued an ecclesiastical career. So good for Germany and everybody else for a thousand years. At the age of 30, he became a priest and uh, a few short years, years later, he left England and joined St. Willibrod in Frisia. <clears throat> um, St. Willibrod is called the Apostle to the Frisians. And uh, so um, uh, St. Boniface, um, Boniface's name was Winifred, by the way. He was born uh, Winifred. And he spent a year uh, there in Frisia preaching in the countryside. Uh, but their efforts were frustrated because of the war going on between the Anglo-Saxons and uh, Charles Martel. <clears throat> so um, they, it was difficult for them to, <clears throat> to really um, evangelize as, as they needed to. So um, uh, St. Boniface, or Winifred, went back to England and then after a year spent in thinking what he could do because, you know, you would have to say he was filled with a missionary uh, spirit. Uh, looking at the, um, the pagans, looking at these barbaric Anglo-Saxons, uh, they needed to be converted. Um, and, and really to be the apostle to Germany like, like he wanted to be, uh, that takes, uh, takes a bit of courage. I mean, you know, to go to the, the pagan Teutonic, you know, Germanic peoples uh, who were still cannibals at this point. They, they, they were not, that was one of their, the things they were practicing. Um, that would take a lot of courage. That would take a lot of um, uh, zeal and, and especially love, love for souls, love for Christ and a desire to save souls uh, from, uh, from perishing. Uh, so after, um, you know, thinking about it for a year, um, uh, Winifred went to Rome, and there he besought uh, a commission from the Pope, who was Pope Gregory II, and uh, Gregory II uh, appointed him missionary bishop for Germany and gave him the name Boniface. That's when he received it, and that was after the, um, the fourth century martyr Boniface of Tarsus. Uh, so um, he, was, he was now appointed uh, official uh, a minister of the church, official uh, bishop, and he didn't even have a diocese, like go basically find a diocese, make one out of Germany somehow. So uh, Boniface returned. He returned the next year, um, and um, it was a difficult task. It was, it was very difficult <clears throat> um, because of the hardships mentioned, because of the wars, because of the, uh, the barbaric nature of the people. Um, and, and there had already been uh, missionaries, and there were some, actually, there were some uh, Frankish uh, cl clerics in the area as well. Some parts of Germany had been evangelized, others had not, uh, but it hadn't, it hadn't uh, unified into a country, or really, it hadn't taken, so to speak. They were not really fully Catholic yet. And especially, he had, he had uh, trouble because of the, the, the previous Frankish clerics um, were drifting into not really heresy, but just a lack of, uh, um, a lack of knowledge of the faith. Um, they, they were taking, you know, they had concubines, uh, you know, discipline was very lax. Um, so it was, it was a difficult circumstance. Uh, so Boniface needed, to, there was syncretism as well, right? They were like, yeah, they were kind of Catholic, but also still kind of pagan. And so um, this, is, this is when uh, uh, Boniface, the, the, the bishop, right, the archbishop here, the apostle Boniface, um, uh, you may have heard the story, decides he needs to make it a decisive move and a decisive statement to the pagans that their gods are false, Thor, etc. All the, they had these Viking gods, those were all false. So uh, there was one giant oak tree dedicated to Thor. And that, that, was, that was, you know, he got Thor's personal oak tree, and you, you know, they had all these pagan festivals around it. Uh, so Boniface announced he was going to cut it down in defiance of the gods. Uh, and this would be a, this is a great act of courage uh, because, you know, he would, he would be, anybody who touched the tree was, was, was uh, supposed to be stricken dead. And so this is, this is published abroad, and they had all these people coming to see this, uh, this uh, cleric get struck by lightning. 
And so he goes out there with his big axe and he starts cutting down the tree. And, and these, these pagans just can't believe, like, where is Thor? Why isn't, why, how is he able to do this? This is a great insult to our, our God. And it's just continued. Um, and so he continued cutting. And I guess eventually uh, there was a strong wind came and uh, blew the tree down after he'd uh, finished, um, you know, cutting through it. Um, and, and it fell into four pieces in the shape of a cross. Uh, so that was... Um, uh, that was kind of like the death blow to paganism in Germany. From that point forward, um, uh, the people saw that their, their pagan gods were false and that this was the true religion. And so Boniface would spend the rest of his days um, uh, working among the, uh, uh, among the Germanic peoples and, and corresponding back and forth with Rome. Uh, we have a lot of his letters are preserved, and he had to, he had to ask questions like, you know, many, many baptisms were defective. Are they still valid? He's asking these questions of the Pope. You know, what should be done about the immoral clergy in the area? Uh, so, um, you know, so we have these letters, and it served not only to resolve the questions that Boniface had, but it strengthened uh, that, that uh, uh, we would say, strengthened the, 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 um, the bond or the authority of the papacy there to Germany. And so it was, it was a great uh, step forwards in forming what we know uh, to have been Catholic Europe uh, that had to be forged somehow. And uh, St. Boniface was one of the ones who did that. Uh, he eventually would be at the age of 73. He's still going around evangelizing and, and doing hard work. Um, but he was, uh, it was the year 754 and they were awaiting, uh, I think, a confirmation ceremony and an enemy band attacked the camp. And he had companions, 52 companions of his, and they wanted to fight, but Boniface told them that, uh, to trust in God and to welcome death for the faith. And so uh, St. Boniface and his 52 companions were martyred on this day, 5 June, in that year 754. Uh, so uh, Boniface, I um, uh, said, uh, has the, the legacy of uh, our three outstanding titles to him which was um, apostle to the Germans, reformer of the Frankish church, and the chief uh, coordinator, uh, the chief uh, um, uh, of the alliance between the papacy and uh, the Carolingian family. And uh, through his uh, efforts, Germany was converted, and that would last for a thousand years, uh, all the way up until, unfortunately, the, the reform, right, and, and, and the, uh, uh, the heresy of Martin Luther and so on, uh, that whole area, uh, Germ Germania, would, would be Catholic. Uh, so not a, bad, not a bad result, right, for, for a life given in the service of God is a thousand years of Catholicism to an entire region, not just one country, but many countries. Um, and, and uh, you know, he's called the apostle to the, to the Germans, um, and I just can't get it out of my head that, that I've heard it said that by bishops today that we are in an apostolic age, um, and it just, it, 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 I find it so irritating because of the lack of understanding of what that means from bishops. Uh, if we're in an apostolic age, then you had better be willing to sacrifice everything. That's what the apostles did. They left everything behind. They didn't worry about uh, money or property or uh, assets or lawsuits. All they worried about was the faith of Christ and the truth. And that's what they worried about, and, the, and souls. And they knew people were going to hell, and they preached it boldly. They called out false gods. They called out the pagans. They, they said to their faces, the gods of the heathens are demons. You are worshiping the devil. Reject the error and accept Christ. That's what the apostles did. And if you're going to have the, the um, uh, I don't even know what to, what to call it. If you're going to call this an apostolic age, but then not do what the apostles did, either you don't know what the apostolic age is, or you're an absolute coward, or, or I don't know, something else. But don't make that statement if you are not willing to follow it up. And that is what priests and bishops today have to realize. And it's also... <clears throat> It's an indictment against all oh, the past 60 years. If we're, we weren't in an apostolic age 60 years ago, an apostolic age means that nobody's Catholic, nobody believes the faith, and we have to go out there and preach to pagans. How did we get here? How did we get to an apostolic age when it wasn't like this 60 years ago? It's because everybody failed. You weren't preaching the truth, and you're not doing it now either. 
So that, this is, look, look, at, look at St. Boniface. He went into an area where they weren't just pagans, they were cannibals. Uh, and they were, there were wars, and they were fighting, they were killing each other, eating each other. And he went in there, and he preached to them, and he went right up to their face and cut down their sacred tree dedicated to their god. That's what you have to do to pagans, because that's what they respect, courage and boldness and truth. And if you have all three of those things, now you can make converts. If you're not willing to do that, you're not going to go anywhere. I just read this morning in, in um, I think it was the, the office of, of Prime, it's Psalm 18. And in Psalm 18, midway through, there is a line. The law of the Lord is immaculate, converting hearts. The law of the Lord is immaculate, converting hearts. If you preach the truth, if you preach the scriptures, if you preach the law of God, if you preach the truths of the church, you will convert souls. You will convert hearts. If you're not converting hearts, it's because you're not preaching the truth. It's very simple. Uh, so, so these days, let us pray for more men uh, like St. Boniface to be appointed bishops, to have that zeal, to have whatever it takes for, for God to raise them up. It's going to require sacrifices. Let us pray for those men who are bishops to get somehow a spine transplant and become bold, right? And to go out there and to do what they need to do for Christ. It, it takes sacrifice. It takes boldness. It takes a little bit of, um, what do you call it, um, um, you know, you have to be a little bit on edge. You have to be a little bit edgy. You have to be a little bit um, what people would call imprudent. Uh, nobody would look at the apostles or what Boniface did and say, oh, that's the example of prudence. They would say that's the example of zeal, the example of faith, the example of love. And certainly he wasn't imprudent, uh, but, but there's, a, there's certain ages when certain virtues are more important than others. And right now, uh, prudence is a virtue, and especially obedience, this false idea of obedience, those are praised to the point of vices. Uh, it's no longer prudence, it is uh, um, cowardice, it's pusillanimity. Uh, it's not obedience at all, it's servitude, and it, it's again, it, it's a lukewarmness, and it's a cowardice. Uh, so we have to realize that and realize that we are to love virtue and not the false uh, 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 caricatures of virtue that, we are, that is presented to us by cowardly men who don't know what to do and don't want to take risks. So all that being said, uh, let us trust in God not to be upset. Uh, but if you're in an apostolic age, then, then we have to be apostles and we have to be willing to risk and we have to love souls and we have to realize the truth just like St. Boniface. And maybe we're not St. Boniface. Maybe we're those 52 companions, right? Maybe we're those unnamed people that have to give our lives and we're not going to be remembered, but, but uh, ex at least not, not uh, publicly, but the church will always remember us. God will always remember us. The saints and the angels will always remember the sacrifices we make. So let us have that attitude to make sacrifices and be bold for the sake of Christ. Uh, St. Boniface, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.